Man, you guys are crazy, I swear. Like 80% of the comments in the last video is about the butter. About the butter. Just can't get away from that. So I got the stick of butter today. And the plan is to cook the most easiest meal that you can get on the beach with the most abundant fish out here. So if you come out here, you're almost guaranteed to catch the fish I'm about to. It's a perch. And I've got this scaler. I'm gonna eat it with the skin. And a big old avocado. So, over here the waves are crashing hard. They're coming from the north, and this big rock in front of me is protecting this left side. So I'm gonna cast out over here on this left side. I've got some two inch sandworms. I've also got some six inch sandworms. So I'm gonna tie a dropper loop, one with the hook stabilized and won't be able to move, another one with the hook loose and it'll be able to swing freely. So for my perch rod today, I've got this nine foot four uh, Lama Glass Red Line. It's a medium light, it's rated to eight to 12 pound and a Shimano Stratic. All the, the gear right here is all provided by Outdoor Pro Shop. So gotta thank them, really appreciate them hooking me up with this gear. So I'm gonna tie this rig on here, try to get a couple perch. So when I'm surf perch fishing, I like to tie a snap swivel to my, my braid, to the main line, just so if I wanna switch out rigs easily, I can do that. So usually if I'm tying a snap swivel or a swivel, I'll just start off with a polymer knot. So now with my fluorocarbon to attach to that snap swivel, I just start off with a perfection loop. So you got the line here, you do one twist like this, boom, just like that. Do another one right in front of it. You put that remaining tag in right between those two. And then you pull that loop from the back up through the front. Just pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. You don't even need to lubricate it. And that is what I'm going to attach to my snap swivel and just cut off that tag in there. All right, so now about a foot and a half down your leader, you want to tie your first dropper loop. How you do that, you make a loop around three fingers, you make it big enough because you want that hook to be able to go through the loop. And then you do four twists. One, two, three, four. Now you got this hole on top, grab that loop on the bottom and pull it through. All right, there's a big old dropper loop right there. And with this one, first I'm gonna put the hook through the line. Now I'm gonna make a big loop, just like that, a big loop right there, and do the same thing. And now I've got a loop with a free dangling hook. So this is just a little experiment to see which presentation is gonna do better. Any votes which one's gonna do better? The fixed one here, or this loose one here? I feel like this loose one here, because it's got a little better presentation. It can wiggle around a little bit. But what do you think? And last but not least, I'm starting out with a two ounce weight. So I'm walking to the spot right now and look at how steep this beach is. It goes down a very steep drop right here. That's a good indicator of if there's a big hole or not. So there could be a lot of fish here because it pretty much just drops right off right down there. All right guys, let's give this a shot right here. There's a big old rock way out there. I know I can't cast out that far, but it's a good indicator that there's structure out here. All right, first cast, the current is pretty strong. It's already pulling it to the right. And I feel the rocks out down there too. Oh, it's pretty rocky down there. I'd rather have a smooth beach on the bottom. Might have to walk down a little farther that way. Give that one more try this way before I walk a little farther. There's a fish right there, first cast on that side. Oh wow, that's a nice perch right there. Yeah, that's a nice one. I mean, it's not a monster, it's not huge, but definitely a perch. I love these hooks too, these gamakatsu, they're sharp. Once you get hooked, you rarely, you rarely lose a fish. Now let this wave bring it in for me. Reel it on in. What do I got here? It's 
So yeah, just like I was saying, it's really rocky, a lot of kelp out here. That's where you're gonna find these striped surf perch. So this is a nice fish right here. Striped surf perch, not exactly what I'm going for. I want a red tail or a bard or even a calico. So I'm gonna release him, but yeah. You usually find these guys where it's sandy, where it's kelpy. Beautiful pattern though, isn't it? These spines are really sharp on the top. So when you, when you grab them, you wanna kind of like you're petting the hair down. Grab them on the top, grab over the spine, get a good grip, and then you just take the hook off and throw them back. Now that I took him off, I don't even remember which one he bit on. Well, I'll have to see that in editing, but. I'll do another cast over here and then keep walking down, hopefully get some silvers. So same spot, I'm gonna cast in the same spot too. See if there's a calico or something or even a red tail mixed in this. Probably not though. Usually when you find these, these uh, striped ones like that, usually it's all striped. It's probably the easiest way to fish too. You'll catch a lot of fish like this if you're a beginner. Just this kind of high-low rig with the dropper loops. You can cast it out on any sandy beach. Just let it soak or do a slow retrieve. You can really tell how steep this beach is when the waves come up. They come up fast, but they stop fast too. Anyway, I'm gonna keep walking down a little bit and try to find a more sandy area and find a hole in that sandy area too. Oh, there's a hit. Oh, man. Yeah, if this is a striped surf perch again, I'm gonna move. But if it's not, hey, I'll keep casting here, same spot too. Man, that thing hit hard. That's the fun thing using these salmon steelhead, steelhead rods. And you just let the, let the wave bring them in. Wow, dang, look at this one. Well, he, he bit on that fixed hook. Jeez, he's fat. This one's big, a lot bigger than the last one. Really, really cool pattern on these guys. People say that these ones are a little bit more mushy and they taste okay. But yeah, just not exactly what I'm going for right now. Man, this is nice though, hit that thing hard. I feel like both hits came on this fixed hook. This has gotta be 13 inches or so. But yeah, so I'm gonna try for those silvers, red tails. Uh, if I get some of those, I'd rather cook those up, but I know I can get these if I need to. So I'm gonna walk down a little bit more, try to catch what I want. So this right there, that's basically what's all out there. All that flat rock, hard structure, all these surf perch and striped surf perch are hanging out there. But now I'm walking down over there and hopefully there's more sand over there and it's more protected. Some big waves coming through here every once in a while. Well, not a single bite there. And honestly, two or three casts is really all you need in one spot to determine if there's fish or not, at least in my opinion. So I'm gonna keep walking closer to that rock where it's even more calm. Well, nearly up against the rock now. Just gonna try here for a few casts before I move back to the original spot. Boom, original spot. There, got one. Nice. This was on the dangling one too. This will be perfect. All right, so there's the fish, just gonna bleed him. Under the gills, get all of them. And the gills go down in a certain length, a certain area, and it's really easy to cut at the farthest point where they go down. Now I'm just gonna rinse them off, let all that blood come out, put them in my cooler, and uh, keep them cold and fresh, ready to eat. Well, no fish other than this one for now. So I've got this $1 fish scaler, and this thing makes quick work of any fish. And it's shaped really nice so, nicely, so it contours to the shape of the fish. You can get right up in the scales, right up in the fins, get every single scale off. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna do. So all you do to scale a fish with this thing 
is just hold it like that and just so it's, it's got these serrated edges not sharp or anything just really blunt serrated edges and you hold it kind of just like a knife and just scale it that's it and and how it's shaped you can get right up on the fins You know you can do a fish in less than a minute, really. Alright, all the scales are off. One side. Easy, huh? And if you want to see the original pattern of the fish, you just brush it the opposite way and it'll come right back. All right, so the fish is scaled and we're going to fillet it and we're going to keep the ribs on the fish and just scale over the ribs. So to do that, we're going to have to cut through the pin bones and you do it like this. So with your knife, just like any fillet, you start off right there. You turn it and you cut along the spine. Just get as close to the spine as possible and you go all the way to the tail. Now once you're over the hump of the spine, there's pin bones that run right along here and the rib cage starts right below that. So if you can cut through just the pin bones, then you'll be able to run your knife right along the rib cage. You can keep all the guts and the intestines inside. So there's the fish fillet. Rib bones are here, pin bones are cut through. Now all I gotta do is cut along right there on both sides and the pin bones will be out. And the fish, all the guts are here, nothing's punctured, no intestines are punctured at all. So I'll just put this next to me for now and then I'll toss it out to the birds later. All right, two boneless fillets right there with the skin on. I'm gonna go rinse them off. So I will admit, avocado and fish just sounds like such a strange combination. I had no idea that it would work either. But when I tried it for the first time, it was so freaking good. It's like, you don't have avocado without salt and you don't have fish without salt. So the combination of the two, if you've never tried it, give it a try. I, I promise you, you won't turn back, especially if you like avocados. So let's start cooking. I'm just gonna heat up this pan a little bit so I can put the butter in. All right, I don't want it too hot or else it'll burn. All right, now I'm just gonna do just a little bit of butter. Eh, why not? So while that butter melts down, let's dump out all that seawater. Oh no, God dang it. I'll be right back. And Well, that didn't work out so well. All right, let's try that again. Dump all the seawater out. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just gonna add a little salt and pepper. I swear this is like the easiest catch and cook that you can possibly do. Got some salt and garlic right here. Garlic salt. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So you wanna get the butter up to temperature first. You don't just wanna throw it in there when it's not, you know, when the butter is still a big old chunk in there. I want to get it bubbling, boiling almost. Not boiling, but, and then you can throw the fish in and it'll crisp up nicely. Oh yeah, there we go. Almost there. And really it's not gonna take long to cook at all. Maybe like three, four minutes. All right, I think that is just about right. First piece going in. Oh yeah. Throw in the other one. Turn the heat down just a tad. And I'm just like pressing it down so the skin doesn't curl up as much. For some reason I've noticed that perch skin doesn't curl as much as like rockfish. Man, that's just about done. It's another minute on this side. All right, take a look at that. It doesn't look the best, honestly, but if you know about fish and avocado, now this is probably making your mouth water right now. I know it is for me. So that right there would be the perfect bite. Little avocado, little fish. You just can't get any better than that. So 
something about the texture of that avocado and the fish and the flavor it's all just it's just perfect it's perfect whatever fish you have next time try avocado with it just make sure it has enough salt and i promise you you won't regret it